Welcome to the uh, next session of the forum. Um, I'm delighted to welcome Be, Re uh, Be Real up here. Um, my name is Morgan Holt. I'm chairman of Branded Content Marketing Association and strategy director at Wolf Olins, but I'm not going to spend much time on the stage because it's all about these guys. Um, the boundaries between the real world and the digital are blurring, and within that space come new customers and uh, consumers and audiences. Um, so I've got with me Petter Westland, uh, who is uh, the founding partner of Be Real and um, Be Real Films, chief creative officer, and Ricardo Giraldi, who is their creative director of Be Real, and I'll let them get on with the story. And over the years, we've done uh, a lot of different projects. Again, as I was saying, uh, films, uh, documentaries, uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, web work, websites, games, apps. Uh, interactive film, uh, and we're always trying to really uh, create a, a you know an emotional connection with our audience, with our users. Um, we were definitely using a lot of uh, uh, you know video and 3D uh, to create this uh, experience. We. We're also using um, webcam and microphone input from the users in kind of an interesting way for the time. This was a while ago. Um, and we definitely managed to scare a lot of people. It was, it was a great project. But looking back now, I think what was most interesting uh, was that we also had a, um, a web to phone technology uh, in place, which basically asked uh, people at the site to enter the phone number. And then the site would call them up and uh, guide them uh, through the experience as they were going through. In the last few years, we also live some kind of a digital evolution, so that now it's much easier for us to interface software and hardware. So, for example, projects like Arduino allows us, you know, kind of easily to connect what we are good at, digital, with the physical world. That means that we can offer new experiences that, you know, are completely new for users because they can affect the physical uh, world. A really good example of this is Mitsubishi Live Drive. It's a project we did win. Um, 180 LA and Mitsubishi. So the idea was kind of simple. I mean, can we let people test drive a car from their computer? So we took a real car and we set it up. We built robotics inside the car and we made that happen. So we had few cameras inside the car and cameras around this truck and people from their, the comfort of their sofa could go on, on a website queue up and control the car uh, for real. And the sensation that you get from driving this car is just amazing because like, it's something completely unexpected. It's something that goes beyond uh, what you thought even was, uh, was possible. And knowing that this is happening live has a huge value to it. Knowing that it's a real car moving has a huge value. We could have done a simulation of it, it would have been the same thing. That's a real car. You know it, you will tell your friend. It's a little story that you will be proud of and you will be happy to share. And virtual reality will, will probably become real at a certain point. But if you think of the experiences that we have, they mainly involve sight and hearing. We don't use all the other senses that we have. But we have a body that we don't use much. But what would be amazing is that to create experiences, now that technology allows it, that use the space around us, that use our bodies, more of our senses. That's why I think that experiences like the, the Wii you know, was very successful. Because it's, you, know, it, you use the space, you use your body. It's something completely new and expected, and we like to be involved. So it's an enhanced video call, uh, like I was saying. And uh, on the consumer end, uh, it's just, you know, you just use a normal browser. Uh, you don't need anything special. But um, on the salesperson side, we have uh, this uh, custom uh, hardware unit. And um, we would really try to uh, sort of make use of uh, sort of the, the, the insights a little bit that uh, Ricardo was talking about, trying to preserve you know, natural forms of communication, like gestures, for example, that, which is something that don't really uh, come that naturally to normal video calls. Uh, and the touch screen helps with that. And also we place the camera in the middle of the screen so we can preserve eye contact with the person that you're talking to, because if you're using you know, your laptop with Skype or something like that, you know, the, the camera's usually uh, a little bit misplaced sort of uh, at, the, at the top and, you know, I think it's maybe not a huge detail, but it makes it um, feel... Uh, Listen, thank you so much, Peter and Ricardo, for all your time. Uh, thank you. We've got, um, we've got Amusement Park Entertainment coming back talking about branded storytelling in half an hour, so do join us then, if you will.